Hello guys. In this video, MPLS team keeps immigrants informed during Super Bowl. Ranking the top Alabama player performances in the Super Bowl. MBB takes on West Virginia. MPLS team keeps immigrants informed during Super Bowl. The military Humvees officers in combat gear and the occasional F-16 flying over downtown Minneapolis are all part of the beefed-up security that comes with hosting the Super Bowl. Minneapolis, the military Humvees officers in combat gear and the occasional F-16 flying over downtown Minneapolis are all part of the beefed-up security that comes with hosting the Super Bowl. But those images can be scary for immigrants who have fled war or are afraid of authorities. A special team has been working for weeks to reach these communities directly and reassure them that authorities are working to keep them safe and that everyone can partake in the festivities. A special team has been working for weeks to reach these communities directly and reassure them that authorities are working to keep them safe and that everyone can partake in the festivities. They've been spreading their messages through radio broadcasts, television programs, social media and in-person meetings with elders and community members. Michael Yang is a specialist working with the Southeast Asian community. He says images of war are still fresh in the minds of many Hmong, and he's been telling people they don't need to be afraid. Ranking the top Alabama player performances in the Super Bowl Super Bowl 52 will kick off tomorrow when the New England Patriots and Philadelphia Eagles square off in Minneapolis, Minnesota. But regardless of the outcome, at least one former Alabama player will walk out of U.S. Bank Stadium as a world champion. Chance Warmack, the only active former Crimson Tide player on Super Bowl Sunday, has been a reserve guard in his first season in Philadelphia. The former Alabama standout appeared in 11 games this year, including the divisional round win over Atlanta. For New England, linebacker Don't Die Hightower and cornerback Cyrus Jones will receive rings with a win, but both players are on injured reserve. Hightower played in five games before he sustained a torn pectoral muscle. Jones, in his second season, tore his ACL in the Patriots' final preseason game and was forced to miss the entirety of the 2017 season. Whether the Patriots or Eagles win, a former Crimson Tide star will earn a ring for a sixth year in a row. But before the final game of the 2017-18 season begins, let's remember some of the best former Alabama player performances from past Super Sundays. Honorable mention. Cornelius Bennett, Super Bowl 25, 27, and 33. Bennett never won a Super Bowl in his 14-year career, but the former Tide linebacker played in five championships during his pro tenure and is one of only seven players to play in five Super Bowls. Bennett made four straight appearances with the Buffalo Bills, 25, 26, 27 and 28, and one with the Atlanta Falcons in Super Bowl 33 against the Denver Broncos. 5. Leroy Jordan, Super Bowl 6 Jordan started at middle linebacker on the Dallas Cowboys defense for 14 seasons and in Super Bowl 6. Dallas faced the Miami Dolphins in January of 1972, a year after losing to the Baltimore Colts. The former Alabama linebacker and the Cowboys defense, which was nicknamed the Doomsday Defense, were able to hold Miami's offense to a field goal in the team's 24-3 win. 4. Don't All Hightower Super Bowl 49 and L.I. Hightower helped New England win its fourth and fifth Super Bowls and made two of the most important tackles to achieve those victories. The first stopped Seahawks tailback Marshawn Lynch short of the goal and one play later, teammate Malcolm Butler picked off a pass to seal the game. The second was a strip sack on Falcons quarterback Matt Ryan that ultimately resulted in an eight-point turnaround that narrowed the Patriots' deficit to 28-20. 3. 
and Stabler, Super Bowl XI. Stabler was close to reaching the big game throughout his entire career, but he finally made an appearance in January of 1977. The former Crimson Tide quarterback was the starter for the Oakland Raiders as the team faced the Minnesota Vikings. The late Stabler threw for 180 yards and one touchdown to tight end Dave Casper on 12 of 19 passing. The Raiders defeated the Vikings 32-14 to claim the franchise's first Super Bowl victory. 2. Bart Starr, Super Bowl 1 and 2 Starr lined up under center for the Green Bay Packers in the first two Super Bowls and walked away victorious from both championship games. In Super Bowl 1, against the Kansas City Chiefs, Starr threw for 250 yards and two touchdowns on 16 of 23 passing. In Super Bowl II, against the Oakland Raiders, the former Alabama quarterback threw for 202 yards and two scores on 13 of 24 passing. Starr was named MVP of both games. 1. Joe Namath, Super Bowl III Before the third Super Bowl even began, Namath guaranteed the AFL's New York Jets would defeat the NFL's Baltimore Colts. We're going to win Sunday, I guarantee it, he said. And the former Crimson Tide gunslinger was true to his word, as the Jets won the game 16-7. Namath threw for 206 yards on 17 of 28 passing, with 8 of his passes going to wide receiver George Sauer for 133 yards. Broadway Joe was named the game's MVP. MVP takes on West Virginia Men's Basketball Kansas State plays hash 15 11th West Virginia in Morgantown this afternoon Tip-off is set for 3 p.m. and the game will be on ESPN2 At 5-4, the Wildcats are currently tied for fourth place in the Big 12 with the Mountaineers But Kansas State usually has not played well against West Virginia the Ears lead the series 9-5 and have won 8 of the last 9 contests in the series. This is the first of two road games for the Wildcats. The team is 2-2 in Big 12 road games, although 0-2 against ranked teams on the road. Today's game may also see the return of Kamau Stokes. What impact this will have on current team chemistry remains to be seen, although that isn't a particular source of concern for Bruce Weber. The bigger concern with Stokes is that he's not quite 100% yet. Stokes has been practicing well but hasn't played in an actual game since he injured his foot against Texas Tech on January 6. Stokes' presence may be more important for reasons of depth. Xavier Sneed struggled with cramps against Kansas and noted that it would have been helpful to have Stokes ready to step in just to spell some of the other players. Let's hope that Stokes' presence, however limited, can spark victory for Kansas State. Women's Basketball Kansas State hosts Iowa State tonight. The game is set for 7 p.m. at Bramlage Coliseum, and the game can be seen on ESPN3. The Wildcats are coming off a bad loss to Oklahoma, in which Kansas State set season lows for points scored 49, and field goal percentage .306. Team scoring leader Kayla Goth only managed 10 points in the game with teammate Kayla Page adding 9 points. Luckily for the Wildcats, Iowa State is struggling too. The Cyclones have lost 4 of the last 5 games and are coming off a blowout loss to TCU. Although February is usually rough on Kansas State, the Wildcats have been tough at home, with winning records at home for the last 3 seasons. More of the same tonight, hopefully. Track and field. The track teams are back on home turf at the De La Stodds Invitational event, along with Oklahoma State, Washburn, and Oklahoma Baptist. The first day of competition brought the Wildcats a new school and meet record in way throw and some big numbers in the women's pentathlon. Mitch Dixon has won every way throw competition he's been in this season, and yesterday, he did it again. 
His Mark 21.68 meters was not only good enough to win the event but also set a new school record and a new meet record. In the Oscar Skyet women's pentathlon, Lauren Tauberg took first place with a total of 3,811 points and a first place finish in the 800 meters race. Teammate Ariel O'Corey finished second 3,723 points and had a career best mark in women's shot put and won the long jump. If you're wondering what happened to Nina Schultz, she set career marks while taking first in the 60H and high jump before withdrawing from the event. In the Steve Fritz men's heptathlon, Max Estel is currently in second place while teammate Antoine Dinard is in fifth place. Leading the event is former Kansas State athlete Ryan Esteggers who is competing unattached and has taken first in nearly all the events so far. Emma Wren won the women's 800 meters event while Kurt Lowenstein took first in the men's event. Kansas State also swept the 400 meters race for men and women, with Justin Davis and Akia Garrier taking first place. Helena Ingvaldsen finished first in the women's way throw, an event where Kansas State took the top four spots. The event continues today with men's high jump and the rest of the men's heptathlon events.